Hello and welcome. Today is episode two of the SDHO, my podcast, Sound Design Hangout. And we're going to talk about physical modeling synthesis. And physical modeling synthesis is, uh, if you come in here into instruments, physical modeling synthesis, or I guess it might just be called physical modeling technology. I realized on Ableton's user manual when I was looking at collision, electric, and tension. Those are the physical modeling synthesizers. I just call them synthesizers because we're playing music, we're playing synthesizers. But tension, electric, and collision, I guess are use physical modeling technology. So <laughs> maybe it used to be called physical modeling synthesis, but it's different because if we throw in analog on here, you know, we've got a waveform, this square wave, right? It then goes into a filter. The filter will then subtract and add frequencies. And then it goes to a volume section, and that volume says, what will the volume do over time? Because you can have a waveform, you can have a filter, but if there's no volume section, you're going to be playing notes and nothing will come out. And so that's what you have in synthesis. That's what you have in operator. You know, you've got these shells right here, and they will have uh, waveforms that then go to a filter that then go to a um, uh, volume, you know, the volume properties. And so you have that with everything. You've got your wavetable, which on a wavetable, you know, you've got these different wavetables, which is a waveform. It's a very small waveform. Um, and uh, this small waveform is... Uh, you know, it's played over very small segments, just like the other waveforms. It goes through a filter and then goes through volume. Um, with these physical modeling synthesizers, or which utilize physical modeling technology, because it's all technology, right? I mean, a synthesizer is technology. Collision is a physical modeling synthesizer, and you've got a mallet. And you'll see this mallet section over here. And a mallet is like, thinking about music class, you've got like a stick and then a little like ball on the end. And that ball can be made of like rubber. Um, a lot of them have, it looks like string or yarn wrapped around it. They're made out of different materials. And when they strike an object, whether they strike, and this is a big part of collision, whether they strike a beam, a marimba, a membrane, so like a drum, think of a drum, a plate, um, a pipe, a tube, um, it makes a different sound. And so what physical modeling synthesis or physical modeling technology tries to do is it says, you know, we are trying to mimic the physical properties, the physics of these physical properties and how the chain of operations um, would lead to a sound. And whereas in these synthesizers, it's okay, we've got the waveform and the waveform will be manipulated and then it will be sent to a filter and it'll be manipulated and then it'll be sent to a volume section and it will be manipulated. Um, these physical modeling synthesizers and in Collision's case, it says, okay, imagine somebody playing a glockenspiel or a marimba um, or uh, other mallet devices, even a piano as we will see. Um, because a piano is the same thing. There's like a little mallet that when you push the key, it lifts up and then it swoops down and then it hits a bar and this bar resonates and then you hear a sound. So in this collision device, we've got two sections. We've got mallet and we've got noise. And that is like 
what our striking mechanism will be. Like, what are the physical properties? And so collision does all of these mathematical physics computations with all of these different algorithms, and it physically models what this is. So you've got an exciter, and this exciter or exciter is the mallet or the noise or neither. Well, if neither, there's nothing. So you can either have the mallet engaged, you can also have the noise engaged, or you don't even have to have the mallet engaged, and you can just have noise. But if you have neither of these, you won't hear any, um, you won't hear anything. So that's the noise. Here's the mallet. Control the volume, both. Turn them both off. You got nothing. So what Collision says is it says you've got you've got a mallet, you know, and that mallet is uh, a thing that a person or some robot or an alien. <laughs> Because we can see collision, you're not just making um, just regular sounds. You know, you can tweak the parameters and just make marimbas and glockenspiel type things that exist on different planets. Because they don't sound like anything, but they sound real. So we've got our mallet, or excuse me, we've got our 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 exeter, the thing we hold in our hand that we will, you know play a marimba like you know like you're playing a marimba or you're playing like a drum like you know what I mean um, and so if we turn so basically the mallet is sculpted here and then it goes to two resonators now we've got a pipe take the pipe to plate take the plate to marimba and then beam is like a, a variety of marimba, so it'll probably sound similar. Similar, different. Now if we turn off this resonator, we don't hear anything. So we have to have a resonator engaged, and we have to have either mallet or noise engaged. So let's hear just noise going through. We can adjust the parameters. There's a filter on here too. So frequency, taking it out. Let's hear what mallet just sounds with the beam. We can adjust the stiffness of the mallet. The noise, the noise component. The color. How much volume we want. And then, yeah, we can uh, choose a choose a different uh, resonator. So when you've been watching my videos, you probably notice when I'm tweaking these devices, something's playing. Either I have a MIDI clip playing or I'm actually playing the keys, right? Because, you know, you wouldn't just start changing synthesizer parameters unless you just knew what it would sound like beforehand. You know, I don't know what this is going to sound like when I put it on, um, when I put it on membrane. So, and I'm going to make a more in-depth video on this. I'm going to make a more in-depth video on collision, like an actual tutorial where I really break it down. I wanted to have some practice talking about it first, just kind of like stand-up comedians. They tour and play like smaller clubs or they, they'll, they'll go to a certain club and, and, and like a smaller one and they'll like work on material before they really release it. So that's why I kind of wanted to work on collision a little bit. But um, you want to basically hit the buttons and change it till it sounds good. Okay, um, so right now, um, if I, I'm on membrane, right? And uh, I'm going to put it down an octave, see what it sounds like. Let's do it again. Just a few tweaks, sounds completely different. So 
what I kind of do, and I'm going to, um, if you click this button and then click return, it then gives you a default. <laughs> so I just deleted everything we did in Collision. What I do um, is, well, first of all, as I said, I like to be playing it while I tweak it. Okay. And I'm trying to dial the parameters in to what sounds good. Okay. I'm not really worried about, you know, oh, I'm going too high or too low, or this says stiffness, and I don't want it to be too stiff. I don't care. I just want it, this, I want it to sound good. So what I do is I pick from this list, and then I go about making it sound good. Like, string sounds kind of lame. Like it almost sounds like a bad synthesizer. <laughs> but I think, okay, so I'm going to stick with string, and I'm going to dial in something I like. First of all, I'm going to see how the mallet changes its tone. That's just the volume. Let's see stiffness. I like that because it's beefier. Let's check out noise. I'm going to come over here to, and add noise, see what that does. It doesn't do much because uh, I think the mallet's really loud. Okay. Um, decay is always a good one to play with. That's kind of like your release. Now, we've got this material slider. Let's listen to this. Let's put it down an octave. Again. Not really liking it. I've never really been that much of a fan of string, but uh, let's change the brightness. Ooh. Actually, I'm going to move it up an octave. I want to see if I can get a good sound from these, like, higher ones. In harmonics, uh, never really gives me anything uh, that I like. High. If you put it on high, it'll basically just use more CPU resources, but it'll just give you something a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to click on Filter Resonance 2 because in a typical setup, what happens is it takes the, the sound from Mallet and it passes it, um, and Noise, it passes it to Resonator 1 and then into Resonator 2. So let's hear Resonator 2 with this beam now. Oh, crap. Yeah, be careful, guys, and uh, see this limiter? Oh, jeez, sorry. Um, this limiter, uh, basically, when that happens, like, your volume gets so loud that it'll literally, it can literally, like, ruin your speakers. So I put a limiter on every track because as soon as it gets to that clipping point... Um, it will knock it down so it doesn't like ruin your speakers. So if no one told you that about limiter, I would uh, take heed. I'm going to turn resonator 2 off. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't really get into collision and tension a whole lot back in the day, even though I did like spend time learning it and playing around with it, and they even say this in Ableton Live's user manual, you can literally make one turn of a knob and like the the volume goes crazy like that, which is weird because you might think, why does that happen? And it's like, well, it's trying to mimic these physical properties of these three-dimensional objects. I mean, it's, it's saying what sort of velocity and sound would a mallet make as it strikes a certain striking mechanism like this string here? You know, or this uh, marimba. Boy, my ears hurt. You, you guys' ears won't hurt because I'm going to lower it down when I do the video. <laughs> Man, that was... I, like, don't even want to use Resonator 2. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, that's kind of it for Collision. Um, because I want to move on. So, yeah, it, the Resonator 1 device. So, basically, apparently a marimba. Um, before I move on from collision. So, you've got your mallet. You've got your noise, whether you want noise or not. Um, noise can do some pretty cool things. In fact, if you turn sustain up, you can get stuff like that. Hear that? Let's turn off mallet. It 
it's like a, it's like you know the people when they play like the marimbas like super duper quick. So anyway, it's like you actually have this uh, Exeter going into Resonator One, which is it's trying to mimic an actual marimba. And when I was reading this in the user live manual, um, see this little bar, you know, it's like those big chunky marimba bars. In fact, that's actually something I did like about music class is like I liked the, those marimbas, like because you'd hit them and it made a nice sound, and it was like this big piece of this wood. It was like a dark wood. It just looked cool, and the different mallets were cool. But when you hit that that uh, that bar, which looks just like this, it then goes into, I believe, a, a pipe. I think. Um, let's try Resonator Two again, because there were like pipes, and so it's meant to go into like a pipe, but you don't have to use it that way. So let's do a pipe. I'm scared to turn this on. This is another routing. Ugh, no. This is like the, this is how it, the default. Change radius of the pipe. I'm so glad we did this. Let's turn it uh, down an octave. Just got beefier. Didn't change when I went from. Maybe it's because I've got to change this resonator down. No, it just sounds better here. I told you guys in one of my other videos, I was like, I didn't really do a lot of collision intention because I just couldn't. It's like I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And every so often, like the sounds would go crazy, and I'd be like, Oh man, did I just ruin my laptop speakers? <laughs> or did I just ruin these little t tweeters on these? Um, studio monitors I have. I was like, I, I hope not. <laughs> I'm like, I hope I've got a limiter on there. Change the pipe. Pipe and tube are similar. So, very cool. Very cool. And then there's an LFO section where you can just start modulating different things. Um, we're not going to get that deep today. Oh, let's see what a reverb sounds like. Like, there already is a reverb because... So if you come over here to audio effects and you see reverb and resonance, you'll notice that you have resonators and you have reverb. Without... It just makes it sound so good. So why was I saying that about reverb? So these resonance... So here's the thing. I, what I was thinking is, why do I need to even add a reverb? Because doesn't it sound reverberant like it's in an actual space? Well, it does because we have these resonators. So resonators and reverb, they give like a, I don't want to say a similar sound, but like things reverberate and knock around. That's why this thing got so loud is because you take your mallet, you strike a thing, that thing vibrates. And then in the case of collision, that thing that's vibrating, this... Um, marimba piece of marimba plank or wood or whatever it is it then it's then vibrating then goes through another resonating thing like a pipe or a tube and then that really resonates <laughs> and you can tweak all of the settings so like if you were like a, a music professor and you, and you were like all about mallet percussion which by the way and if you do have ableton live suite um you've got packs and there's this pack you get called Orchestral Mallets, and that's really cool too. But this is where you, it's like a synthesizer mallets. So, um, yeah, and, and uh, it's, there's just so many cool things you can do. So let's get rid of collision. And before we wrap up the Hangout, let's drop tension on. Ouch. Why is this... We better drop a reverb or I can tell this is going to sound really um, like it needs it. <laughs> it's just funny what reverb just does to dry sounds. It's just great. I'm going to keep it on the default. So I'm not going to get very deep into tension, guys. I'm really not because I'll be honest, collision, collision is pretty straightforward in my opinion. Or maybe the Ableton gods were just like, yo, we want you to like really have fun with collision right now like don't worry because i'm the kind of guy where as soon as i'm like 
oh wow, collision's my new favorite thing, then I'm gonna make myself get just as aware and learned with tension and electric. But I tried playing around with tension and I was getting nowhere, dude. Um, but I can explain it. So, so this main, so you got these different tabs here. Um, you got these tabs. And if they're on, if they're activated here, they're activated. Um, if we play this Exeter, we're getting a plectrum. So before we had that drop down list, we've got a bow. Why is that so loud? But if you turn down the force, you can't hear it. But then you turn it up, it gets so loud. So like if you're just tweaking these things, it's it's just, I don't know, hammer. So it almost kind of has like a, a very collision vibe to it a little bit, you know? Hammer bouncing. It's got that little clicky, little bouncy going. Let's see if we turn damping down. Um, plectrum, that's the default. It sounds good because we've got this reverb. Turn off the reverb. That's what reverb does, my friends. This is great. So here's the thing. Um, from what I can tell, and what does tension do? Tension is trying, it's using physical modeling technology to model a stringed instrument. So think of like a violin, whether you play the violin like with some sort of a pick, you know, or you play any stringed instrument with a pick, or if you use a hammer or a bow, um, it seeks to replicate that. Now, damper, let's click. Now, here's the thing. I don't really, I think for the most part, you're primarily in this exciter panel, you know, and you pick one. Like, I'm probably just going to stick to hammer or plectrum for now because they kind of give more of a predictable sound that doesn't get insanely loud and like terrify you because <laughs> your ears don't want to hear that. Um, and then down here, these properties. So if we turn down the decay, what do you think, right? Ratio. And then let's click on, so from what I can tell, you don't always have to use all of these other sections. The way I've heard about it is damper and termination. I think those will probably have the least effect on your sound. Body, there might, body might actually do a bit because it might be like a resonating. Let's play it without body. Let's put body on. Turn off body. Always A and B things, like turn a thing on, turn a thing off. If you're like tweaking uh, a flanger or a phaser and you're like, okay, okay, turn it off, then play, then turn on. Oh, that's how it sounds. So like you're basically developing your ears. Piano, let's do guitar. A little different, a little twangy. That's probably just... Uh, more resonant calculations, but more CPU. Let's do violin. Without. It's very subtle. Um, what I believe body does is like, you know, like certain instruments, like a guitar, you know, if you've got like an electric guitar, playing guitar. This is like one of my favorite shirts. The weather is getting nice here. We've got 60 degree weather here in the Midwest. Um, and it uh, looks like spring is, is here. And... Um, this is one of my favorite shirts I've been worn in a while. There's like a like a hundred guitars on the back. Um, I play guitar too, and we're definitely going to get into guitar rig tutorials because that's like my favorite guitar processing suite. It's a, a plugin by Native Instruments. So what the body section does is the guitar, the piano, the violin, and whatever generic is. It will say, okay, um, you know, like certain guitars, like an electric guitar. You know, it's really all electric but like there's certain guitars that are like hollow bodies or like an f body or whatever and like you know it'll it'll basically add a little bit to it from what i could tell when we were tweaking the sections over here in body it didn't seem to really do all of that much um 
And then you've got damper and, and termination. Damper and termination, from what I read, um, and by the way, these don't seem to have a lot of sound. Like if we click damper. Turn it off. So what is this damper and termination? Here. So when you're playing a guitar and you are um, putting your fingers down, you're holding down a big bar chord, you're, hold, you're, you're basically like dampening the strings. And I think that's what dampening comes on. So dampening is trying to base it mass and stiffness. <laughs> Think about it as a hand that's playing this stringed instrument. And this hand is probably a very light hand, like very held down lightly or very hard because it's like some big roided out dude who's just like hammering power chords. <laughs> Stiffness maybe means how stiff someone holds it. The position, you know, and then termination, I believe, is once the chord is strummed, it's like how you might subtly release so maybe tension doesn't have to be too scary maybe you just have to watch out when you're on the uh, bow was it bow i think it was bow i want to like i want to click bow and see if it goes crazy or not i don't know i'm pretty happy with what we covered with tension so far in fact i'll be honest with you i used tension like once not once i probably used tension like 15 times in the past over the last like five years and I've used collision probably like 30 times. Um, I used tension like two days ago because I felt like such a such a super superhuman because I was like, oh my god, I've been using Ableton forever and collision is like my new favorite thing. And then I was like, maybe I can fall in love and have the same experience with tension. And then I used tension and then I had one of those crazy volume spikes and I was like, oh. This is why I don't use you. And uh, damper, termination, I can't even hear it. What, 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 what does it do? Do I need to know it? Then I was like, don't. Don't use, don't, then don't use it. I'm like, no, I have to know every area because I have to teach them all the areas. So what, I'm, what my strategy is going to be, because you should always have a strategy, is I'm going to get to really know Exeter. Okay, I'm going to turn all these, these other guys off. You got Exeter. We've got these properties up here. Velocity and key, that just has to do with how velocity and key mapping. We can get into that more later. Um, these string properties and then vibrato if you want vibrato. So let's see what vibrato gives us before we move on to electric. Give me some vibrato. Where's vibrato? got the amount all the way up. Vibrato is typically no more than 10 hertz. No attack, so you would hear it all the way. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's only activated on another one, or maybe damper has to be on, or turn... See, I turn them both on and they hardly do anything. Let's do violin. I'm already falling in love with tension. See, and guys, that's another thing, too. If you open up analog or operator or wavetable and you're pissed off because it feels like it feels like nothing's happening, I guarantee if you open it up again, you'll be better. Like I'm already starting to get excited about tension. The last time I opened it, like yesterday or two days ago, I was like, oh, I'm never opening up tension ever again. <laughs> And I knew I would, but now I'm like, okay, now I'm starting to get kind of interested now. So I'm going to delete tension and we're going to come back over to instruments and we're going to close off the hangout with electric. Now electric right out the gate, right out the box. It's electric piano. So it's modeling electric piano. And the crazy thing is guys, I'm 
I'm turning the blend all the way so it only actually no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna no not convolution I'm gonna put on algorithm so we just have this I kind of want to know what quartz was I was like I want to experiment vintage put vintage on am I not am I clipping yeah dude it's beautiful play around so here's the thing remember when we were talking about collision tension and now electric electric's like the same thing tension's like the same they're all kind of the same you start with a thing you you hit another thing that other thing vibrates and it might perhaps vibrate another thing which is a resonator well they're both resonators but with electric it hits a thing and then an electric coil picks it up just like an electric guitar that's why electric guitar or electric pianos like roads and stuff they sound so like dreamy or they can um so like the hammer how stiff's the hammer right i'm gonna turn this volume down how much noise when it gets strict then this this is like a Oh, I think this is the this is just the fork panel, right? Okay, yeah, the hammer. So this is the hammer, and this hammer hits this fork, okay? So let's adjust this stuff. Ooh, decay, because that's like release, basically. Now let's go to uh, let's let's tune uh, change the fork. back into fork see how this panel adjusts you basically just hit it and change the parameters by the way i haven't played electric in a while i do have presets that i've made in the past that i really liked but just going in and doing sound design electric i haven't done i've just got some good presets so now this bottom area so this is the damper and the damper i think is like on a regular piano or maybe any piano, I think like when you push the keys, the 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 little mallets or the hammers go up, and then they fall on to the thing and it vibrates, and then this vibration is getting picked up by this coil in the electric piano, just like in a guitar, the pickup, the electrical pickup, and then that's what gives it that sound. Um, this damper, well, I guess the damper and the pickup. Okay, damper I thought was a little bar that then falls down to sort of dampen the sounds, you know? Um, so let's play with damper. And apparently there's there's two pickup types. There's R and W, so let's hear the difference. Play with the tone. Be careful with pickup. I think that's where it gets like super duper loud. Cause maybe like the zero distance means I don't know, but you know what I mean. So I'm not an expert in this. Let's uh let's go to parallel. Let's get a spring. Clean spring. Turn down some decay. And so serial, remember I would say serial goes into the convolution reverb first, then it goes into quartz, kind of like what we were doing with collision, where it, went in, it goes to the first resonator and then the second resonator, but you don't have to do that. You can just use one resonator. So that was it, guys. Um, my battery's about to die, and I think we did some good stuff today. Um, I didn't want to make this a tutorial because I wanted to do a lot of talking. I didn't want to make a tutorial like physical modeling synthesis. And then people are just watching it like, yo, I want to see you tweak stuff. You know what I mean? Um, I figured it'd be good to talk about this stuff. Plus, I also wanted to play around. Like, let's just play around. Mostly about love, let's face it. Love for this stuff. I ain't making this because I'm, I hope it will pay my bills. Although I will be starting a Patreon soon. So if any of you would like to support me, that would be great. And I wonder if Patreon has a crypto section, if you could get paid in crypto. I'm really into crypto. Are you guys um, into NFTs, into crypto? Um, anyways, uh, so that's it. We looked at the physical modeling synthesizers, collision, electric, and tension. And now I love tension. So because I made this video for you guys, I now realized, huh, tension I might end up liking tension just as much as my newfound love affair with Collision. 
Um, oh, and I'm also loving Wavetable. I always loved Wavetable, but now I'm starting to be like, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> So anyways, guys, if you liked this, um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Um, this was really fun, and I really liked going over electric as well. Um, I need to play with it a little bit more. I kind of get the feeling that after you play with electric for a little while, because there's less stuff to tweak, um, I think you'll know how to really dial in your sounds. Um, I'm kind of curious, and this is homework for you guys. Uh, you know when you hear like a really nice electric piano, like a Rhodes piano, and like sometimes it has a quality where it almost sounds like glass. Like the sound is high pitched, but it's very glass-like, almost as if like there's a bunch of glass wine glasses and like little mallets are playing them. It's like, -da 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 -da. It sounds like you're like walking on ice. I don't even know. But I'm like, hmm, how do I get that ice sound? You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing, too. You guys do realize that you don't have to do it all from scratch. So if we go over here to electric and click this little triangle, like, these are all um, these are all presets. In fact, others, I think, are the presets I made. So I have this D-flat Lydia. Way too loud. So, look, instrument rack. I've got a operator and an electric piano so I hope you enjoyed it yeah you can just go in and oh, you go oh, I want a pad so let's see what Atmos pad is in electric why is it, why is everything so loud today it's really weird because normally it's like and you can turn all these knobs and if you want to know where the device is, if you click here, look, see, they've got an electric <laughs> and they've got two operators. So each time you're playing a note, it's coming through all of those. So, um, so yeah, guys, um, I'm, 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 I'm very juiced up. I'm very excited because this was amazing. And it, me making these tutorials is making me much more excited to, uh, I'm learning all I'm learning new things too. So like, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed episode two of SDHO, Physical Modeling Synthesis. Have a great day, and I'll see you back soon.